Hello, everyone, and welcome to this radcast of the Social Club at the End of This World. Uh, super excited to be joined by all my brothers in the mission, both in person and online. And uh, welcome, everyone. Um, and would anyone like to give a brief introduction or update? Totally optional, as most of us have been well introduced before. But just jump in if you got anything you'd like to update us on. I'm Ray. I'm in Toronto. I'm helping Silash manage the base camp. And we just launched a sign up uh, survey, a Google survey. So have a look for that uh, and sign up for all the groups, the uh, task forces and study groups that uh, intrigue you. Beautiful, Ray. And I just wanted to add that Ray's referring to the base camp for Vegan World 2026. And if you'd like uh, information on that, just uh, say so, and we'll send it to you uh, for how to join. All right. Uh, thank you, Ray. Again, other introductions or updates? All right, looks like everybody's good. Well, shall we jump right into it, into the topic, the main topic at hand? And I'm just gonna, again, characterize it since we just started recording. But the, um, l let me frame it this way. We know there's a bunch of things that absolutely need to get done in order to save life on, life on Earth, and most of them are urgent. Some of them, like solar radiation management, I would put into the category of super urgent. That's like the fire department. The house is on fire. The house has lots of problems, but the most urgent of them is the, the fact that it's on fire and exponentially overheating, which is setting us on a course of uh, total annihilation of virtually all complex life on Earth, certainly us larger species, right? So um, that's really not a reality we want to contemplate, and that therein lies part of the crux of the problem is we as a species are having a hard time staring this in the face. So, you know, part of our problem is, you know, awakening people to the true reality, right? Maybe not the 350.org reality of 2050 or 2100, but the actual reality and um, of, of how dire the situation is, and therefore, the absolute urgency and imperative for collective action so that we can stop this runaway train of, expon of exponential overheating, starting with SRM. But, you know, where do we start to make that happen, right? For me, it's logical that we start with collective intelligence and also, you know, framing the whole thing properly for the public. And then how do we get that message out here properly framed, right? Well, and I'd like to emphasize here, just super quick before Dan and Adam, that um, while SRM might have, while, while all of the different problems that our collective intelligence tackles are going to be prioritized differently, and we're going to want to do some things before others, um, I'm personally getting this sense more and more that a lot of this needs to happen um, simultaneously or a lot of things need to happen basically all at once. Um, and I, I think it's key that we find ways of integrating uh, these different problems um, and kind of recognizing the root problem as our separation, I would say, and lack of real cooperative collective intelligence, I'd say that's, that's really at the root. Um, but yeah, I just, I just thought I'd throw that in there that it's, 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 uh, it's worth paying significant attention to several problems and then figuring out how those all integrate. Beautiful. All righty. Why don't why don't you um, um, expand on that a little bit? That was a little abstract, I thought. Okay. Um, I mean, like, what are the problems that need to be dealt with simultaneously? 
and what is the root as you see it? I mean, you don't have to go into a lengthy explanation, but I'm just curious what you think the root is and how we're going to prioritize the myriad problems. Okay. So the root of it, I, as I would characterize it, is um, we took a fundamentally wrong turn psychically and philosophically um, and culture-wise and story-wise about 10, 12,000 years ago when we went into the agricultural revolution and we came into this big illusion that we're all separate and this is mine and that's yours and let's build fences. And uh, we inadvertently then set, us, set ourselves upon a course of divide and conquer and divide and destroy and get every last board foot of lumber that you can out of the forest, grow soybeans for a few years and let it go to desert after that. Um, all in the interests of, we're playing, we're basically playing fundamentally the wrong game, but by a long shot. I mean, it's not just, oh, the game's a little bit tweaked. No, it is radically fundamentally the wrong game, right? We're in this modality of separation and hoarding. And um, when what we need is unity, right? All of us together, like we're here together right now, right? So we need to make this radical transformation as a species from unicellular to multicellular. It's sort of like the Cambrian explosion amongst humanity, where we're starting out as these, indi as these individual cells and we need to go multicellular. Collective intelligence is the medium of multicellularity, right? It's the medium by which we do this. So if you're on this video conference right now, pat yourself on the back, okay? Literally, pat yourself on the back and uh, thank yourself for being here. Congratulate yourself because you're an early pioneer in this new modality. Okay. Imagine tens of thousands of these video conferences happening in parallel, simultaneous transcription and posting of those transcripts so that you can search in real time. What are people talking about right now? If somebody's talking about SRM right now, I want to be there. Bam. If I can get in the room, I teleport in. If they'll let me in, some are invite only, so be it, right? But at least I can watch and at least I can comment and, you know, we'll work out all the kinks of all these different modalities of communication, right? But the, but the bottom line is radical collective intelligence. All of us are talking. Go, go ahead, Ray. And then we got a couple guys in the queue, but for quick hits, just jump in. Go ahead, Ray. Uh, yeah, when you say collective, you mean... Everybody, is this a, uh, have, have you examined what is the, the uh, crowd that you need to collect and, and convince there's a certain demographic that just isn't into climate change and, and uh, it's, it's a pretty big demographic. I'm not intimidated by it, but a lot of people are. When you say everybody's got to change, you, you kind of have a look around and go, yeah, these people aren't going to change. I guess it's got to be me. And how much of that... Uh, of those energized people who are going to overwhelm all of the uh, um, passive people who just have given up and, or they just don't think that there's a problem. Yeah, I, I would answer that in the following way. It's, it's, it's kind of like the innovator is the leva crossing the chasm. We're starting with a very small segment of the population of these early adopters, that's us, right? Welcome Darmendra. And we expand over time as we get better with our messaging, right? And as we get better with our collective intelligence and it just suddenly becomes this hot story that there's this collective intelligence out there, they're ending hunger, they're going after cooling the planet with SRM, they're vegans, they're this, they're that. There's all, you know, it just becomes this hot, sexy story. Then as the story gets sexier and sexier and sexier and the messaging gets better and better, not like it is today, but like it'll be in three months, then people will say, holy shit, I gotta join this thing. This thing is hot, sexy, and cool. Right now, it's nerdy, it's geeky, right? It's fringe, right? And so it'll be hotter than the next, I the, uh, next iPhone. That's the... Uh... Yeah, exactly, just looking around the room, starting with myself, you know, you got some hairy, pot-bellied guys who, you know, let's, let's face it, some of us have seen better days, right? Some of us don't smell too good, you know. So we're, you know, we're we're this this nerdy, 
You know, I, I don't remember the last time I had a shower. I think it was yesterday, but I can't remember. You know, were those I was confident that Zoom was going to mask all that. You can actually tell. Well, That's wait a second. You don't have the olfactory download? <laughs> I can smell you, Ray. It's, 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 like, it's like Silence of the Lambs. It's like, <sighs> you wear polo. I had enough time to shave or shower, and I chose shave. I, 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 get, I get it. I get it. But we, we're on to you now. Okay. So anyway, you know, you get my point. We're not exactly the sexiest crowd ever assembled on a stage at Madison Square Garden, right? But, you know, but we're doing our thing and we're doing it so damn well, right? That, you know. You said the magic word. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. You said the magic word when you said uh, um, early adopters. That's a, a term that I'm familiar with from uh, Simon Sinek talks about the diffusion of innovation. And uh, he does a little video of that if you want to look it up that explains it quite concisely. So if you take. Um, take out innovation where, where he's talking literally about a product and talk about it, the innovation being a human innovation and it all still applies. 10% of people are going to just get it immediately, but they have to hear the story first. So that first step is, uh, is uh, exposition and uh, awareness. Totally, totally. And you've hit the nail on the head, right? Whether it's cell phones, fax machines or diet cola, right? there's early adopters for every new category. This new category is called Radical Collective Intelligence to Save Life on Earth by bringing together all these super badass movements, veganism, SRM, collective intelligence itself, right? Arco arcology, um, transforming and healing all kinds of social, ethnic, racial, cultural, religious divisions, right? And animosities. Um, uh, transform all that. Anyway, I just put that under the social, right? Basically, humanity, put your own oxygen mask on, right? If we're going to fly this plane called Spaceship Earth per Bucky Fuller, we got to put on our own oxygen mask first. So that's the, that's the realm of the social. Once we've got our oxygen mask on, our, to Nolan's point that all this has to happen in parallel, right? As we, in parallel, get our own mask on of the social, we also embrace the holistic, all species, ecosystems, and life supporting systems, right? So those are two big pillars right there, the social, the everything, right, the holistic. SRM as immediate firefighting, veganism as the heart and soul and core of the healing of planet Earth. Post fire, hopefully, it's gonna be kind of hard to remodel the house while it's while the whole thing is on fire right i mean it sounds like a bad mtv video or something like that um so uh, put out the fire veganism um collective intelligence itself and then unifying coastal communities I, i've named six things there i'll name them again in a couple of minutes so we'll we'll repeat it we'll wash rinse repeat on this but we're basically boiling it down to what are the pillars that we need to address simultaneously and holistically to make the whole thing happen. See, Nolan made a really good point the other day. Um, and the analogy is an enchilada, right? Fred, if I showed up at your, at your doorstep and I rang the doorbell and I just had a cold, big flour tortilla there, you'd tell me to go, you know, eat it myself or something, right? You wouldn't be too interested. But if I came with a nice hot enchilada with all the trimmings and, you know, vegan cheese and vegan cream and, you know, all, all the good stuff. Oh, the, the whole enchilada, right? With dancing girls and everything. I think your reception might be a little different, Fred. Okay? Okay. So anyway, um, we got a couple of guys in the queue, but I, I think we're, I think we're, we're zeroing in. Uh, Dan, uh, followed by Adam. Take it away, Dan. Yeah, so I'm, I'm Dan from Chicago, um, and uh, I, I have to go over some things which I uh, brought them to the conversation before, but I continue to believe they're critical. So if we have radical collective intelligence, lots of minds cooperating, combining, 
we have to have some way of evolving a narrative from this cooperation. And that's, uh, you know, conceptually a very easy thing to conceptualize, but it could be, and it probably in fact, it's unbelievably difficult to actually bring to fruition. So I always mention that we have to consider constraints on the process because if those constraints continue to operate, then all of the energy, all of the work gets, uh, you know, either uh, halted or it becomes distorted in various ways. And of course, even with all the good intentions in the world, when we're talking about human beings trying to cooperate, it's difficult. Uh, so let me just bring up a few points which I think are, are uh, critical to the process. So right now, you know, the, the, this last week, some of you may have seen it, you know, Sam Carana, posted something the other day in Arctic News. It was basically, uh, you know, you can look at it. The bottom line is he's saying it's possible uh, because of, uh, I think it's uh, La Nina, uh, El Nino kinds of uh, uh, occurrences that uh, we may be really at the end of the road in terms of a rapid exponential rise in average global temperature. Now, whether it's this recent post in Arctic News, we can go back, you know, at least to around 2013, 2014, when knowledge and understanding of the decent probability that we are not in a linear process we are in an exponential process concerning average global temperature rise. And what continually has happened is the exponential possibility, maybe it won't come to pass, of course, maybe it's not going on, but it is a reasonable, there's a reasonable probability that this is what is going on. And it has to do with all sorts of feedback loops, which are generally, if not totally, not incorporated into the models that get the most publicity concerning climate change. Uh, you know, little, uh, well, I say, you know, Greta Thunberg, uh, one of the last things that she said, or one of her last speeches and messages was basically, uh, you know, something along the lines, there's probably uh, some pretty severe feedback loops that aren't really being considered the way they need to be as part of the process. So uh, here, here's the thing. Uh, how do we frame the narrative? It makes, to me, it's like, uh, it, it's so ludicrous that uh, we're going to talk about everything within the confines of a linear model because if it is exponential that's something we need to consider as a real possibility and what does that mean you know so if it's linear and you actually had till 2100 which has been for you know really some decades the the normal way of talking about it well that implies to to the average person you got plenty of time there's not a problem. We're, we're technologically sophisticated. It's only a matter of time before we figure it out. And, and it's not you, a person uh, today, it's your grandchildren or your great-grandchildren. That's what we're concerned about, you know? Uh, uh, but as, as Guy McPherson used to use the line, and I thought it was uh, 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 pretty informative, uh, how, how about starting to think about the fact that maybe we're the grandchildren? That tends to set off the appropriate kind of anxiety where you can then say, what can we do uh, to get this thing solved if that's what's going on? 
and we really don't have till 2100 or 2070, et cetera. And, and uh, should our efforts really be uh, uh, on what can we see? We're talking, right? Well, what can we do immediately? It's, it's an emergency now. Well, we have to be able to get that out there, the, the reality, uh, however you want to talk about it to people, that we're looking at uh, an exponential process, probably, maybe not, but probably. And that needs to be incorporated into the narrative. I'll get back to it. I'm, I'll go ahead and uh, mute out right now. All right. Thank you, Dan. So quick responses before we go to the next uh, in person in the queue. My quick response is basically summing up what you're saying, Dan, this is most likely exponential. And that's a really, 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 really big deal. And what with what narrative do we hit that exponential? Dan, you remember Monty Python from the 70s and 80s? Of course you do, right? Remember the big foot that would come down, right? Big foot. Okay. So here we have this exponential curve, all right? The only thing that's going to send it back south is a big Monty Python foot, okay? We were joking on Sunday morning. You know, like they have this kind of massage where you don't touch the person, right? We're not going to stop planetary overheating by some, you know, hands-free massage. It's got to be wham. And the only thing that can do that wham, there is only one thing, and it's got three initials, S-R-M. If you haven't gotten into it yet, get into it and get over it. We need SRM immediately. It's the only thing that'll cool the planet in time in the face of this exponential. So I'm totally with you, Dan. And that's what the narrative needs to be. Any other thoughts on, Dan, I'd love to hear back from you. I mean, does that narrative do it for you? Or do you need well, bigger baseball? No. Yeah. Here's, let, let, me, let me just go back uh, quickly. Um, so that is, um, you know, uh, uh, the narrative there would be, Jamin, uh, exponential, uh, it's an exponential process. And we're kind of getting along uh, on that uh, curve. And, and so we need to do something majorly. How about solar radiation management? But here's the thing, it was, uh, I think it was alluded to earlier in our conversation. Of course, uh, we have massive amounts of people 